Heading into the 2022 draft process, Jermaine Johnson was a fringe first round pick. But fast forward three months and the FSU edge is almost a lock to go in the top 10. So let's break down the Johnson film together and I'll show you why I love his ability to rush from the 4-3 defensive end spot, while his floor is relatively high because of his run defense, and overall why I think he'd be terrific value for the New York Jets at number 10 overall. Let's go. What's going on everybody, it's Luke here from Play Like a Jet. Another breakdown, looking at a draft pick, a potential top 10 draft pick in Jermaine Johnson, the edge out of FSU. And I'm really impressed by his film and the buzz has been building all the way to people saying, I think he could be taken at number four. I'm not that high on Jermaine, but the film was really nice. So let's break it down. I'm going to show you why he's considered a top 10 pick. And a lot of it starts with the pass rushing and the ability to win on the outside, which is crucial for an edge in today's NFL. So we're going to start with looking at some of his moves or in particular one move that he uses, and it's somewhere between a Euro step to the outside and the cross chop that you've seen a lot of integrated into the NFL over the last three or four years. So starting off here against Miami, he had a fantastic game. He's on the left defensive end position, left-hand side of your screen, number 11. This is quintessential Jermaine Johnson. As we let it roll, look how he fakes like he's going inside on the tackle. Watch what it does to the tackle stance. He's coming out, he's getting his feet set, but then he starts to shift his feet and shuffle them back to the inside. As he's doing that, Johnson's able to dart off the inside leg and look at him come over with the right arm, chop, and then swim around the corner and get to the quarterback for the sack. We'll watch it again at full speed. You can see the fluency of his movements, the ability to shorten up the feet, spring to the outside, and then swim over the top with that club to back it up and pull through. That is exactly how he wins. And looking at another rep now, in the red zone against Boston College, he's on the right-hand side of your screen. It's going to look almost identical. This is a bit more of a typical cross chop, though. So coming in again, he's starting to short up the feet, look like he's going to bull rush through the chest of number 64, and look at the way he just uses that right arm to chop over the top, to take away the hands of the offensive tackle, and then he uses the right arm to wrap around. They call that a pull through, and he's going to come around the corner and affect the play. In the end, this is a screen, but don't be fooled. This isn't a tackle bailing because he needs to get out in space. This is a genuine pass set for him. Johnson beats him with the cross chop, the pull through around the corner, and it's another pressure. He does it so well. This time, it's a bit of a quick pass set from the same game. Again, though, you'll see him winning with this kind of Euro step to the outside themes all over the pass rushing for Jermaine Johnson. He wins consistently in this manner. You can see the tackle gets out. He wants to get hands on him quickly. He's reaching. Johnson identifies it, so he springs off that inside leg and creates extra space for him. What does he do next? He is fantastic with his hand utilization. We already saw him with the cross chop. We saw him with a little swim move. On this occasion, he just swipes both hands. He's able to keep his chest clean, which is essential for him as a pass rusher. And then the ability to turn around the corner well enough and not quite a sack, but influences the play. It's short of the first down marker, and it's a turnover on downs for FSU. But swiping the hands, creating the space with that inside stab from the right-hand foot, and then getting to the quarterback. That's a really good indication of who Jermaine Johnson is as a pass rusher. So without boring you, here we go again. Different utilization of his hands on this occasion, though. Same footwork, though. The way he sets up number 64. Gets that left leg in the ground, that outside leg. Look what it does to number 64's footwork. He shuffles back to the inside. Body weights over his left knee. That's exactly what Johnson wants. This time, he goes right arm swim over the top. Starts off with that left arm club. Comes over with the swim and doesn't get to the quarterback. But it's another pressure. And it's the same footwork with a different utilization of his hands. I really like the club swim gets to the outside so, so easily, and it's silky smooth. He's a technician with his hands, particularly on these Euro steps and the club swims and the cross chop, all of those things, they are right in his repertoire. But that's also the negative of Jermaine Johnson, as good as he is at winning with that pass rush move. I'm gonna flush the, the sacks and the pressures up on the screen now. They're all very similar. It's a small bag of moves. And there are guys like Yannick Ngakwe who wins with the same move over and over again and he has success. But you want to see a little bit more from his counters. Is he going to be able to rip with the right arm and bend around the corner? You don't really see it. You don't see too many inside moves. That's the negative for me. But there are a few occasions where you can see it and a different kind of speed to power or something like that. So you can see here number 11 left-hand side of your screen against Miami. 
Same footwork though. Even when he wants to go speed to power through the chest, he's darting off that right foot, almost a Euro step, get to the outside. You can see the tackle. He loses that right leg. He opens the hips right up. So good identification, comes straight through the chest, beats him with power and the two hand punch, and then impacts with the force fumble. Again at full speed, same footwork, but this time good identification, well done playing with his eyes up and going through the chest speed to power. And then one more from the same game. This was more of a genuine one-arm bull rush, long inside arm, and I liked it. And you saw this at the Senior Bowl. Look how he forces the tackle back into the quarterback's lap. I know he doesn't get the, the sack. I know that he doesn't get to the quarterback. But this is a big, strong man with extremely long levers. And look at the way he's able to turn that speed to power and get that inside arm right up on the shoulder pad and force him back into the quarterback's lap. It's impressive. It's there. We just need more of it. So when I'm watching some of these prospects, guys, if you know my process, I like to go and watch them against the best. And Ikem Ikwanu is the premier tackle in this class. And Jermaine Johnson gave him trouble and a lot of it. I want to show you a couple of reps. And this shows a little bit of growth with his counters as well. We saw this at the Senior Bowl down in Mobile. He's on the left-hand side of your screen. Look at this for a spin move. Just flies off the line of scrimmage and just whooshes past Ikem. Number 79, the best tackle in the draft. Look at the speed. A little bit of nuance though. I really like how he uses that left arm to propel off the back of the tackle and redirect to the quarterback. It's an efficient line. This isn't some wild spin move. It's tight, it's quick, it's aggressive, and he's able to get to the quarterback and impact the play. Again, I know it doesn't work out, but all you can ask is that you put yourself in a position to make these plays. And then as we transition to the running game, he gave you in trouble there too. There were a couple of push-pull moves, but have a look at the speed of this club swim. He understands Iquanu wants to shoot off the line of scrimmage and beat him and get a helmet on a helmet and push him downfield and take him three or four yards down for a ride. He clubs with the right arm, he swims with the left, and look at the speed of it. Zoom! He's gone and he gets to the running back. That is beautiful. He is a high level run defender and I'm about to jump into that, but look what he does against the best tackle in the draft. I think that's really gonna give him a higher floor in the NFL. Here's another example against Boston College, almost the exact same thing. He's in the same spot, left-hand side of your screen. Look at the footwork, the ability to identify what the tackle is trying to do. Okay, he's trying to come outside, take me for a ride, outside zone type blocking scheme. Gets over the top with that club swim and then gets to the running back again. And what I like about this play is the ability to keep his feet. It's easy when you get redirected. You can see him going back inside, shortens up his steps, and then makes the tackle, wraps up an extremely good job in space. And that's a great transition because have a look at this play against Miami from 2021. You want to talk about a guy in space and Trayvon Walker and all these freaks? Well, Jermaine Johnson, throw his name in the ring too because you can see it's this jet sweep type motion that's in vogue in college in the NFL. He identifies, eyes up, blockers leaking out. I've got a one-on-one -on -one tackle with the wide receiver, and he makes it. That is one heck of a play in space for a 260-pound athlete against a skill position player. He takes a great line and look at the length, the athleticism, a fantastic job. But it's not just that. He can hold up in the run game when you want to be stout, when you want to penetrate. So this example, again, from the Boston College game, he's on the right-hand side of your screen, taking on 16, gets hands inside, forces 16 all the way back into the right tackle, keeps his head in his C-gap, and then he's able to just watch the play. I know he doesn't make the tackle. I know I've said that a few times. That's not the point. It's the force, the physicality. He should win this matchup, but he does. He throws the tight end to the inside, keeps outside contained, and then just completely Fs the play up. That's the type of dude he is in the running game. And one last example, left-hand side of your screen, can he stand up and be the edge that is on the end of the line of scrimmage and he's setting it? And he's gonna make sure no one's going outside my contain. Well, look at him take on the double team here. Holds it, keeps his feet, and then manages to duck back to the inside and he's there to make the tackle. I understand someone else gets there first, but the ability to flood back to the inside, feel the cut back lane, he does an awesome job. So there's the film breakdown of Jermaine Johnson. Really like his film out of FSU. And as a pass rusher, he wins with the cross chop. He wins with the club swim. You'll see him with the Euro step footwork, but he has a small repertoire. He doesn't have a lot else to build off it yet. He's 23, he's a slightly older prospect, but overall, 
He wins from the outside and I love that. And that projects well and it projects quickly and that gives the Jets the security they need, particularly picking in the top 10. Would I take him at four? Like I said at the start, no I wouldn't. But you've got an increased floor because of the run defense and because he can do those things at such a high level as well. He's nimble, he's quick, he's physical, you can set the edge. So I think he's safer for the Jets than a Trayvon Walker. That's the direction that I actually would go. So yes, take this kid at number 10. If you miss on Thibodeau, I think they should go Gardner. They should look to take a guy like Johnson at 10, and then you attack receiver by either trading up or sitting there at 35 and 38. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.